Good evening. My name is Brenda Amy. I'm the manager of the Small Business Development Section of Hillsborough County's Economic Development Department. Thank you for joining us tonight and taking the time to participate in our first public meeting on expanding the University Area Enterprise Zone. We're looking forward to receiving your feedback and comments about the potential expansion. We will also have comment cards available if you want to ask additional questions and we'll get back with you on that. We have a short presentation. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize Commissioner Miller. Would you like to say anything? Okay. And at this time, I want to introduce Lynn Schultz. She's the Enterprise, Enterprise Zone Coordinator for Hillsborough County and she also handles the Enterprise Zone for the City of Tampa. Thank you small group, small and quaint, so um, probably won't go the full two hours that we're scheduled. We'll probably go about an hour, depending on how many questions and comments that we have. Um, but I would like to thank everyone again for participating, and as Brenda said, providing your comments is critical to us, and you can provide those after the meeting and we can address those. I would like at this time, before I do start the presentation, to introduce some of the board members of the Hillsborough County Enterprise Zone Development Agency who are here as well as recognize those who, who can't be here. Um, the list of members, Lerone Benjamin, Kenneth Christie, Dexter Barge, Manny Rivero is here, Jay Robbins, Edward Vance, Suzanne Tate, Bill Maddell, who's here, Brad Bridges, who's here, and Dan German. Also, I'd like to recognize the City of Tampa Enterprise Zone Development Agency. I don't see they have any members here, but they've been very supportive as we've been going through the process of amending our, or potentially amending our boundaries. Those members include Christine Burdick, Clinton Johnston, Ed Johnson, Evangeline Best, J Dr. Jason Wilson, Lakita Armstrong, Lance Morley, Quentin Robinson, Randy Smith, Juan Davis, Stuart Rogers, and Alfred McGinty. Um, I'll go ahead and get the, the presentation started. And this public meeting is to f inform you of the benefits of expanding the existing university area enterprise zone, which at this time is the only designated area by the state of Florida as an enterprise zone in Hillsborough County. It's an unincorporated Hillsborough County. It's approximately 3.1 square miles, and we are permitted up to 20 square miles under the Florida state statute to increase our boundaries and capture other areas throughout the county. What exactly is an enterprise zone? An enterprise zone is a specific geographic area that's targeted for economic revitalization. Enterprise zones encourage economic growth and investment by offering tax advantages and incentives to the business owners who are located with the, the zone boundaries. Just to give you a general idea, there are a number of enterprise zones throughout the state of Florida, both rural and urban. And this was a program that was introduced under the Clinton administration back in the 1990s. Our zone, Hillsborough County, was established in 2003. It was reapplied in the year 2005, and our zone is due to expire in the year 2015. At that time, we'll reevaluate, submit an application based on poverty and unemployment levels, and hopefully be redesignated as the enterprise zone again. Additionally, the city of Tampa has their enterprise zone, which is a total of 20 square miles. They are completely at capacity. Whereas, like I said, we're only at 3.1, but we are permitted also 20 square miles. Our current enterprise zone runs from Bears Avenue to Fowler Avenue, Bruce B. Downs over to the edge of 275, perfect square. Some of the benefits of being in an enterprise zone and having an area designated as an enterprise zone, the businesses that are located in the EZ, as well as anyone who rehabilitates or develops real property in the EZ, will receive potentially some of these incentives that are available. One of the greatest ones is the Enterprise Zone Jobs Tax Credit. And for example, if this particular area was designated as an Enterprise Zone, businesses that are located in this building, in this area, this facility, if they hire residents of this area, the university area, or the City of Tampa Enterprise Zone, or some of the other areas that we're looking at, they will be able to take advantage of the Jobs Tax Credit and receive up to 30% credit on the monthly wages of each of their full-time employees. Full-time employees is defi defined as 36 hours per week. They'll get that credit for two years on each employee. The next incentive listed here are the building materials sales tax refund. And again, I'll use this property as an example. 
If there are renovations done, rehabilitation, um, somebody develops real property in this area, the building materials and the sales tax that they pay on their building materials, they could get up to $10,000 back in the sales tax that they paid and reimbursement from the state of Florida. This is actually a check in their pocket where the jobs tax credit is a credit on either their sales and use or their corporate income tax. The next one listed here is the business equipment sales tax refund, similar to the materials. If they purchase major business equipment to be used exclusively in the enterprise zone, they will also be able to get their sales tax reimbursed on that piece of equipment up to $10,000 per piece. That's an unlimited incentive. So if you buy 10 pieces of equipment to be used at your business, each of those pieces of equipment will qualify for a sales tax reimbursement. And again, that's literally um, a check back in your pocket. The next one listed here is the property tax credit. This is one that we don't handle directly here at our office. It's not handled directly through the Enterprise Zone Coordinator. It's done through the property tax office. And this one is a credit that allows new or expanded businesses that locate in the Enterprise Zone um, that create five or more new jobs. They get a corporate income tax credit equal to 96% of their ad valorem taxes paid on the new or improved property. So not too shabby, great incentives that are a huge benefit to encourage growth, encourage jobs, and build the community. The proposed enterprise zone expansion that we are talking about includes three different areas. Under the Florida state statute, you're permitted three non-contiguous areas to total the 20 square miles. Our existing zone, as I mentioned, is 3.1 square miles. And what happened, um, the BOCC requested that we research other areas in Hillsborough County to identify who may qualify as an enterprise zone. It's based on poverty levels. The poverty levels have to be 30% or higher and 50% of the designated area. And the remainder of the area, they have to be 20% or higher. The unemployment level has to be higher than the state average, which at this time is, I believe, 8.9%. So the areas that we identified throughout the, con the county did qualify under those criteria. We analyzed all the data. We did surveys. We did tours. We checked out all the different areas. And we narrowed it down to the three areas that we're presenting to you this evening. The Enterprise Zone Development Agency Board reviewed the information and approved it. And we were able to move forward with the expansion. The proposed expansion at this time will increase our existing zone from 3.1 square miles to 15.6. This will allow us additional square mileage later on and the flexibility if we do decide to amend the boundaries again. The first area that we're looking at is actually just north of our existing zone. And you do have maps that were provided to you when you checked in. The existing zone right here is that perfect square that we showed you earlier, the 3.1. This area here that we're adding on adjacent to it, conti it's contiguous, will be an additional 0.98 square miles. This area is Sinclair. And then this area right here, this is um, Bears, back down to Fowler. And also the City of Tampa Enterprise Zone is just south of Fowler Avenue. <coughs> the area that we're located in right now, this is the map for this particular area. We are approximately right here. This is Sly Avenue. This is Kirby Avenue. Down here we have Hillsborough. And right here we're running along 50th Street. Again, we border the city of Tampa existing enterprise zone. This is primarily residential. These are residential mostly as well, the apartments. So this allows the opportunity for additional jobs to be created for the residents of this area. The final area we're looking at, this one is all over the place. This is more towards the South County area. Again, we have the city of Tampa shown here in the pinkish color, which captures the port and into Ybor City and some of downtown. This area, we run into Palm River and south down along 41. We captured Mosaic in here. Over here, we've captured 78th Street. Goes down to Gibsonton Drive, up to 301, and then back down Riverview Drive to meet back up to 41. The benefits of the expansion like I've already mentioned, it allows them to take advantage of the state tax benefits, those that I listed, the jobs tax credit, the building materials, as well as the business equipment. It encourages the creation of jobs and capital investment in a larger portion of the county. And it's a greater job opportunity for the residents. And one thing that we've heard a lot of from our businesses in the existing zone, they are unable to find the qualified and skilled labor that they need to hire. So this will open up more opportunity for them to hire from 
perhaps the Gibson Tennessee Palm, Palm River area, this area, as well as the city. So they'll have a better opportunity to identify their skilled labor. And of course, economic prosperity for everyone. Okay, at this time, we'd like to open it up for questions and or comments. We will ask you that you come up to the microphone because as Michael mentioned, it is being recorded and will be available on YouTube. And Edward Vance, another Enterprise Zone Development Agency, thank you for being here with Hillsborough County. Comments? I got a couple. Okay. Thank you, Bill. See me? And you can hear me? Uh, I'm Bill Matul. I have a small business not far out of the zone on the north side here, and I live just north of the zone here. So when you, uh, obviously you said uh, rededicate the zone down the road, uh, obviously the goal here is to make it so the zones go away. Well, eventually we want to improve those areas, better right. the community, and then graduate from if the Enterprise Zone program. If they're needed, we'll rededicate it. Exactly, because it's right. when you do the reapplication, like we will have to do in 2015, we'll evaluate the poverty and unemployment levels. And our goal is for eventually we don't meet those goals anymore, and then the areas experience community prosperity. Exactly. Uh, the other one you had mentioned about the hiring folks, obviously, uh, someone that had a business in the zone on the north side here and they hired out of the uh, zone on the, as long as they're in one of the three zones they meet the qualifications. As well as the city of Tampa. Un understood. Let me put that down. Can be from any zone. Tampa too. Uh, if uh, a business uh, has uh, current employees and they didn't know that they were in an enterprise zone or are they eligible to say oh by the way I have five guys that have been working me for three years that live in the zone, do I qualify? Unfortunately, unless they're going from a part-time status to a full-time status, they will not qualify. Okay. You have to file your application with the Department of Revenue within six months of their hire date. Understood. Uh, the uh, uh, tax incentive, uh, you said that if it's equipment to be used in the zone, uh, an example would be there may be a landscaper that purchases uh, some kind of uh, forklift that uses to lift something but he actually might be working there and working there and working there but his business is in the zone is that there are some s exceptions to the rule we actually did something similar for the Toyota dealership that had a forklift and it was occasionally removed from their property and we did get an exception I will say it is difficult to get that right. exception we do have to be proving that it's being used primarily for the success of that business that's located in the zone understood Okay, uh, obviously the turnout's a little thin on the folks that we would really, really want here. Is there uh, anything in the works in the program, go beat on doors? What do we have to do to make people aware? You, know, you guys do a great job on the internet and, and things like that. And, and for, for folks like me that are, are un, uh, aware of what's going on, but uh, I can tell you that you can drive through uh, the zone on the north side here and they don't have a clue. Well, one of the things um, we do have our business consultants through the, the Hillsborough County Small Business Information Center, we are out in the community and we do advise business owners who are located in the zone about the incentives that they do qualify um, actually for. But one of the things that I would like to look at as we move forward is a marketing plan. If we go through with the expansion of the zone, is creating a better marketing plan to now let all the new businesses that could take advantage of the incentives know that they exist. Is there other marketing plans uh, are part of that plan. You know, an example would be, uh, you know, Mayor Bob gets on a jet and goes to Brazil to, in, in Panama with jets and all those things. Are we sending information out to companies that may consider relocation, thousand job eBay kind of companies that say, hey, there's massive incentive to build your new plant in this area? Absolutely. We, we, we collaborate with other partners in the community, such as the EDC, City of Tampa, and they literally bring us all to a table to share the incentives with the businesses who are considering relocation to this area and make sure that they are informed of the incentives they could qualify for. As, as a board member, how would I find out about when those things happen? Unfortunately, most of those are under a confidentiality through the state, so technically it's myself that gets involved with that. Understood. Um, but the board members as a whole, I've always made available flyers, brochures, and information so that when you're out in the community, you can help us spread the word. And I thought there would be some confidentiality on that. Yeah. Uh, and is there a, a, a 
a regular communication with uh, our governor and his office because uh, I know he's heavily into getting some jobs and things going here too. Yes, we work very closely with Bert Von Hoff at the state level and they actually have changed our reporting requirements because they are putting them on the governor's desk. In the past, it's my understanding they were not being presented directly to him but to his staff. But we had to change our reporting now. Instead of being a fiscal year, we're going June through July so that they can make his desk by November mm -hmm. so that he can see the results of the zones. All right, I have one other little business question. Uh, you know, when we think of business, you think of, you know, simple retail and things like that business. It's really obvious that that's a business. Uh, what about uh, folks? I, I'm, I'm affiliated with a lot of builders and stuff that build homes and, and apartments. So if there's a business that they uh, are, are builder owner of, say, apartment buildings, is that a business? Is that a qualifying business? That's strictly for residential living, but it's strictly, it's really a business. Well, they did change the Florida state statute. Condominiums and apartment complexes don't necessarily, they do not qualify. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'd like to recognize Lakita Armstrong, um, chair per chairperson of the City of Tampa Enterprise Zone. Thank you for being here. Okay. Hello, Lynn. Uh, my name is David Franklin, and I just wanted some clarification. Is this in stone, this map? Nothing is, is in stone yet until we take it to the Board of County Commissioners for final approval. I will tell you the maps and how they were determined, the boundaries that are, are shown there right. are based on the census block groups and the, and the census tracts. We went all the way down to determine the unemployment and poverty levels. So you may see some areas that may not be included. It may be because of what the census data re reveals. So the census data on one side of the you know, on one side of the interstate versus the other it could vary that much? It, it very well could. And actually, we have an area, I believe it was the Progress Village area, that we thought would qualify. But based on the way the census block group is, one side of it. But when you're saying census block, that's on income? It's based on unemployment and poverty. Okay. And so we had one side that it was showing that it would qualify, and the other part of that group did not qualify, unfortunately. The poverty levels, 50% of the entire designated area, I'm sorry, 30% of the entire designated area have to, it has to be a 30% or higher and 50% of the group. And the remainder have to be at least 20% or higher. When does this go before the county commissioners? It's scheduled for December 16th. And are there better maps available so that there's cl more clarity on where We will work on definitely creating some better maps. Um, I do have the maps that we can zoom in on here to look at them closely if there's an area that you would like to see, but I'm not sure it's going to show the, the actual street roads that and, and such that you were looking for, but we can try it if you want to. Is there a specific? You, you'll do it now, mm -hmm. you mean? Well, I don't want to bore everybody with this. So, I mean. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, we can. Well, um, you know, it's 8417 Palm River Road. What I have is pretty much, it's the map that you have in front of you, but I'll just be able to zoom in on the area. Well, I mean, it, it's not on here. Let me clarify. Okay. It's not on here. So let me give you another place. Uh, 24, um, 54th Street off of Causeway. Okay, here's just Causeway. North, yeah, just north of. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Tell me when to stop. So, so there's the track, so it's here. Okay, so that would fall your in. Yeah, okay. That Any answers my question. Okay, glad we had the Zoom. <laughs> Thank you for the Zoom. I, I meant, if I may, with your expertise, you could probably uh, zip that over the Google thing to where people could go right down to there. And actually, that's what I was having to do this afternoon when I saw some of the streets weren't listed, so. I mean, because it is a good incentive for people to possibly relocate to one absolutely. of these absolutely. Uh, areas. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Nick? A little bit a lot here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nick Ewing. I'm actually the managing partner and property manager of this property that you guys are here at today. Um, my father wasn't able to meet this meeting. He is the majority owner. And I had some questions on his behalf as well as when I got from here. Um, you said it's going to the board on December 16th, correct? Mm -hmm. After that, what's the process action time of when it's going to be instituted? 
We have everything in place once the Board of County Commissioners approves it, if it moves forward. Everything is in place. The package will go to the state of Florida. Um, I'm not sure. Manny, I'm going to ask you, since you were involved in the original, do you know how long the final approval was? It's, it's my understanding it's very quick. As long as we have the entire package together, then I'm guessing six to eight weeks is what okay. it, it moves fairly quickly. Gotcha. Another quick question is, um, here we do a lot of the renovations. I foresee all of that going on. With any kind of contractors and their employees coming into my property here, do they get any kind of the tax fund as well? They have or do to they be, have to be living? They have to live in the zone? Well, they have to be residents of the enterprise zone, and they have to be on your payroll. They gotcha. could not be subcontractors. Okay. And uh, the process of getting all of the refunds and credits, is that a simple process? Is that something that's extensive? Is that, you know, sitting down at the DMV all day and making it happen? <laughs> Nothing to do with the DMV, I thank know, you, <laughs> unfortunately. It's sitting down at my desk with me probably for a total of about 30 minutes. Um, we can fill out the applications together. I suggest you take a shot at it first because it is a very simple process. A lot of business owners, unfortunately, do not take advantage of the tax incentives because they think it's a difficult process. However, that's what we're here to do. Um, we have business consultants on site that can help with that as well and handhold you through it and make How sure that you have it in order. Um, the building materials is four pages. Uh, actually, the building materials, I'm sorry, is three pages. Okay, um, so business, mm -mm, the, the job tax credit is up to four tops, and the business equipment is three pages as well. The toughest Only part is um, saving your invoices. Because for the building materials as well as the business equipment, you do need to submit your invoices, and that has to be done within six months of the purchase of the equipment or of the renovation. If you do not have all your invoices for the building materials, you can do the assessment method, which is taking your property tax value from the year prior, and then we, we have a formula that we use when you get your appraisal from the tax office the following year, that we can do it that way as well. One more quick question I had was, is do these tax refunds and credits continue until the next, um, you said that it goes through a process of where they determine if it's going to be, it's going to continue or if it's not going to continue. Does when, when this county, when 56th Street and from here to there, this county potential zone, I think it's two or three, goes ahead and gets initiated, is there any time that it's going to stop? Is it going to keep going forever? Is there another time We're that it needs to be revitalized or reevaluated? Re we are set to expire in the year 2015. At that time, we'll run the poverty and unemployment levels again and make sure that we still qualify. Um, and then we'll move forward and then usually the designation's another 10 years. So it's, it all depends on how the enterprise zone reacts with the area. Correct. And it continues on until then. Okay, cool. Are there any, and then stupid question, I apologize. Not stupid. Any cons at all that would inhibit anybody that wouldn't be, that would be in the zone, are there any any bad things to the You're plan. asking me that question. I'm going to tell you it's all beneficial of because it's community wealth, community growth, that's what I thought. and that's my job. So. <laughs> cool beans. I appreciate it. Thank you. So to back you up on that, I worked hard being very new to this to find the downside. None. He's a new board member. <laughs> okay. It's all possible. What's well, a beautiful thing for for business? All positive. All good, sir. Well, that's the purpose of it. It's meant to create okay. businesses, create jobs, and to take advantage. We want the small businesses especially to take advantage of that. Uh, on the flip side of it, we have a lot of big businesses that are taking advantage of it. Walmart, right. you know, for example, over in uh, our original area, Area 1, they're taking advantage of it. But we need the small business owner to get out there and be aware of it. That's where the marketing has got to come in. Exactly. Could, could they're you too just, busy. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. I said they're just too busy. Small business owners, busy in this business. Right. And that we need to let them know we're there to help them through that process. And we're going to be assigning some additional staff to it, too, to go to them directly and help them walk through the process. That's critical. Yeah. Now, what did you say about the, the property tax? Could the property tax that? credit, um, I have to read it straight, straight from here because I don't necessarily always process that when I get the copy after the fact. The property um, tax credit allows new or expanded businesses located in the enterprise zone that create five or more new jobs, a corporate income tax credit equal to 96% of ad valorem taxes paid on the new or improved property. So walk me through that. I mean, excuse me for being naive, but I don't follow you. 
okay, basically, if someone comes in and, and builds a new property and is hiring a minimum of five new employees, they're going to, they're going to get, I'll read the next paragraph and maybe this will help you clarify. Firms must earn more than $5,000 to take advantage of the credit. The amount of the credit must be added back to the Florida taxable income. And then if the 20% or more of the, well, this part's not critical, but the federal tax burden may increase since state tax liability is reduced. Okay, so let's say I have a business. I have five people that I hire that's in the enterprise zone. So ex tell me, what, what credit do I get off the property? 96% of your ad valorem taxes that's paid. The question is, do you own the property though or do you lease it? Very important. Very, okay. If you're a storefront and you're a retail store, yeah, you, then you don't follow. It doesn't apply. So, but if you own the property, then it's, thank you for that clarification. Thank you. So but basically then, I mean, the pro you'll be no pro it could possibly be no property taxes. I don't have a suggestion. I said I wasn't going to speak. I'm oh, sorry, sir. You, you, you're in the, you're in the Palmer area? Yes, sir. Isn't there another one going to be held in the Palmer River area? Palm River, yes. You had a more suggest that we get someone from Palm River Kids' office that may, that's probably a appraiser. Right. Okay. Come with you and explain that. It's on the uh, 12th of November. Yes, sir. At the, um, so yeah, I, I saw that, Mr. Miller, but I was so intrigued by this, and yeah, I wasn't well, familiar with it. I wanted to come tonight. I understand, but she, you're asking her a question. I don't think she did. Really I, I don't process those, so I can just read from you, or from the Florida State statute, what the yeah, credit I'm is. Not, yeah, I'm not. And, but you, thank you very much. You, you clarified it for me. There's also flyers in the back that provide the details. There's the green flyers on that back table. Yeah, I wasn't very good in school, so I don't know <laughs> Well, real quick, if you build a gas station and your tax burden is uh, $1,500 a month, 96% yes, of that's a lot of dough. However, you have to act, act as though that is income, so it changes your tax burden with the feds and how you have a profit and things like that. So that's where your, your uh, uh, tax professional that you work with, they know all those things, and they'll help explain it to them so it's done correctly. Wow. But it's still... Okay, so I got another fourteen hundred dollars in profit every month. Uh, yeah, but who can? I'm in. Yeah, I'll take it. Bye. And Major Burton, thank you for coming this evening. Enterprise Zone Development Agency for the Hillsborough County. Manny, uh, yeah. be doing any outreach with the Hispanic chambers, you know, to get the word out to, you know, some of the other minority businesses who might not get this information and. Uh, you know, they might not be able to understand it. So maybe the Hispanic Chamber might, might be able to get this information to them. I know our communications department reached out to our Hispanic liaison as well as Louis Lopez to make sure that they reached out to their email databases that they would know that the meetings were being held. But we'll be definitely partnering and collaborating with them to make sure they understand the incentives available. Um, I believe Louis Lopez was doing a translation and it was going in a couple of the papers. Any other questions or comments? I, I'd just like to say one more thing. Uh, uh, the Sheriff's Department is here. I want to give you guys kudos. I have lived and worked very near the university area, Enterprise Zone, and I've been there since 1983. And the dramatic difference in things like crime and issues like that, whatever you guys are doing, it's working. <laughs> yeah, it worked. So thank you. We, we, stay, uh, we stay busy at it up there. And I involved. understand. And uh, uh, of course, we're, we're excited to be involved in, in you know, on the board as well. And, and we have some things going on in the Nucio area uh, that you know will be directly impacted by this as well. So Christmas shopping's around the corner. We know the deal. The parking lot up at the University Mall. I think everyone's aware of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we put extra there's control there's in there. And of course, our camera system up there is, pays dividends every day, every day. I guess that concludes our meeting. Um, <laughs> I said an hour, right? <laughs> Thank you again um, for participating. Please feel free to join us for our next public meeting. Our next one is at the Gardenville Rec Center on November 7th in the um, Gibsonton area. 
And uh, there's also the comment cards, like we mentioned, available for you to submit any other questions and or comments that you may have that we can answer after the meeting that we will follow up. Thank okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. <laughs>